I changed characters. Hello there, everybody. This is Siwat the Flam One here, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy IV. So, last time, we ventured pretty much deeper into the lunar subterrain and got a few more good equipment for Kane and some an equipment for an equipment, yeah, for Rydia and Rosa. So now we're going to continue onward through our adventure through the uh, lunar subterrain. And hopefully we're going to find a thing. And monsters! Yes. So, oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. You're going to absolutely love these enemies. Because these enemies are the dragons. Yes, they are dragons. And they do exist. They pull the dragon card. They pull the dragon card. Thankfully, Frozen is not a status in this game. Thank God. Because otherwise I'd be raging... But, here's the thing about this. Uh, the red dragon, I believe, attacks two times. And the blue dragon only attacks once and has the ability of Snowstorm. So, yeah, you want to attack the dragon evenly if you decide if you decide to use Bahamut in battle. So, I'm going to basically go ahead and split my attacks evenly amongst the uh, blue dragon and the red dragon. Just so that uh, um, uh, Bahamut can finish it off in one fell swoop. Or at very least, get very close to finishing these guys. Because even with Bahamut, this guy can do... The uh, Bahamut can do, like, a load of damage towards the, uh... Towards the, uh, dragons. But, uh, I think the blue one... Yep, the blue one's dead. So all that's left is the red one. And now I'm gonna get off a life 2 on the guy. And I'm actually gonna use Bio on the red dragon. Or not, I can pretty much kill it. But look at that, over 100,000 gil for that. And pretty much over 1,500, 15,000 experience for that, so... Yeah, pretty good, pretty good idea for you to actually fight these guys. If you're ready enough. But as you saw right there, we got a crystal shield. The crystal set is pretty much an important weapon thing for Cecil. It's very important that you get this set because Cecil will take like a bunch of damage if you if you just go ahead and get them. Get the crystal set of weapons or equipment actually. And unfortunately Cecil has left our world. But hey, we got a phoenix down. Hey, do you want to know what's the age-old joke in Final Fantasy? If Sephiroth did kill Eris, then why couldn't Cloud just use a phoenix down? Huh? Huh? Why couldn't he? I'll tell you why. Because it's not a battle. And people who don't... Who get zero HP in battles get incapacitated. That's entirely different. And ah! This thing. The real martyr. All he does is be... Is he's being extremely annoying with his Libra spell. His scan spell. That's all he does. He scans you... Or he scans himself, rather. And he tells us that he's weak against lightning. I don't know why he would be weak against a character from Final Fantasy XIII. But okay. So basically just do a whole lot of damage to him. So that this battle can go on pretty quickly. Because if you don't take long enough... Well, he'll start to get more annoying. Nonsense that he's tough, mind you. Because literally Libra is all he does. But trust me, you'll want to just end this battle so you will be less annoyed. Alright, so we got a few thousand damage out of that. Got that, and he's probably going to do Libra again, but he's not because he's dead. Hooray. Yeah, unfortunately, Rosa is running out of MP, and I'm running out of Ethers to give, unfortunately. So, this is pretty much going to be my last bit of curing up with everybody with Rosa for a bit until I can get my MP back up to speed. Because I think in this chest there is actually... Oh, never mind. There isn't. Okay, so what we just got right there is a defense ring. Now, I think Rydia needs it more, maybe, because the defense ring will increase your defense. And since Rydia does not have the best HP in the world, 
she'll go ahead and get the defense ring. It's not an engagement ring, it's a defense ring. There's a giant difference between those things. And I think, yep, there's one thing out here. And it's a treasure chest. Okay, it's probably going to be like a chest full of monsters. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to use up the last bit of uh, magic that I have with uh, Rosa. And, unfortunately, I'm going to have to use that elixir to get um, things back up to speed with Rosa's MP. Because I know, I know, I know, uh, Rydia can, you, can just use... Uh, Osmos, but according to my luck, Osmos does literally nothing, so yeah, that'll be a thing. So I may have to use items actually on this fight. Monsters! And look at that, another thing. This is wonderful, right? This is wonderful that we just keep on running into these things like complete and other things. So we basically gotta do our same song and dance like every single time against these guys. And I'm gonna have to do my same song and dance with the Berserk. And unfortunately, I do not have any more, um... Uh, shurikens to throw. Plus, I'm saving the rest of my objects that I can throw for the final battle, so... Yeah. I'm basically gonna go ahead and do that. What's really strange is that, uh, this behemoth actually does have more magic resistance than the last one. That's really weird. But if I'm going to keep Edge alive, actually, I think I'm going to have to go ahead and just cast Image on him. Or make Edge do Image. Because that will increase his evasion. And evasion is a good thing. Because otherwise, he won't attack you. Besides, it only costs like 6 MP. That's basically all he does with his MP. Just uses MP for ninja stuff. And with that, defeating up the Behemoth, we get the Crystal Armor for Cecil. So we can just go ahead and get rid of that so we can replace it with that. Yeah, we got a pretty big defense boost for that. And I said, no, I want to heal. Ah, these things. Elamagnes will cast death upon you. Yep, which means basically in 10 seconds, you die. Yep, no, no harm against that. No, nothing against it. If these, if this guy casts or death upon you, or in most other cases, doom, yes, you will die. No questions about it. You, your health will just immediately go to zero. So yeah, you want to beat this guy as fast as you can. Because you don't want your other party members to die now, do ya? But here's the funny thing, really. Uh, this guy can actually recast Doom upon the guy who is already going to die anyway. So it's like, what was the point? What was the point of that if you were going to cast Death upon me anyway? The other funny thing, actually, is that you can ca you can still cast things even if... Even if your guy is dying or at zero seconds left. And look at that. 6666 six, six, six experience. <laughs> That's actually kind of clever that they did that. You know, they give you like a huge gill amount. And yet, you have only like a 6666 six, six, six experience. That's pretty funny. Not as funny as the time I get elite experience in Pokemon. Seriously. I know where that place is in Pokemon Black and White 1. Where you get, like, lead experience. Or something like that. I don't know. All I know is that I got lead experience that day, and that's all that matters. And in the LP, too. So, it is good. But anyway, up here, I think... Yep, monsters! And... Two red dragons. Okay, I, I think I can deal with this. I think I can deal. So, yeah, I'm basically gonna just have to spread damage equally again, pretty much just like I did with the red and blue dragon of the stuff, because yeah, the red dragons, again, will attack will like to attack twice in a row. Like what he just did to Edge right there, which he died. That's cool. That's very cool of you. In fact, it's so cool that I don't even appreciate it at all. 
So I'm going to bring out Bahamut, and that's pretty much going to be the last of Vidya's MP. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to teleport out of here and just use a cottage or something, because this this place is very mean in terms of save points, like I said. I think there are only, like, two save points. And, spoiler warning, if, if anyone would like to care if there's a save point near the end, like, near the place where you beat the final, where you fight the final battle in this place, well, I can tell you, it's nowhere near that. Yeah, it's nowhere near that. It's, it's really unfair. But hey, we get 20,000 experience for that, and pretty much everybody gained levels except those who died or those who didn't get level ups. But the important thing is that we don't select our magic guys. We select the gauntlet, I think. Wait, is that the crystal helmet? Yeah, it's a crystal gauntlet for uh, Cecil. So all that's left is the crystal helmet, and we're pretty much golden here for our Cecil. Except for one thing. So, yeah, that's pretty much the end of our stock on... ...stuff. Yeah. Well, shoot. Well, that's what you get when ethers, uh, dry ethers, and, uh... ...dry ethers and elixirs are... ...are, like, hella expensive. In the moon. Or on the moon, as I would... Blatantly say because my grammar and pronunciation of ethers, ethers, whatever. I'm going by Xenoblade pronunciation of ether or ether. Bah! God, I can't speak today. But uh, that's not the way. Um, I was thinking of like a secret passage there for a second. That contained like a secret passage for something. And lo and behold, that zombie sore is dead. Rosa gained a level, yay. But you know what I'm probably thinking? I'm thinking I should probably just teleport out of there anyway. I know it's gonna be like an extremely long walk for me. But... But, seriously. Seriously, I have to heal up my MP and... Oh, come on! That was like barely one step! That was seriously like one step! You can't even give me another step! Come on! Okay, so... I think I'm gonna have to heal up these guys the old-fashioned way by just doing this. By just going up to the healing pods and just going in and healing up my status and MP. And then basically just running away from every single battle known to man. From this. Yeah. Because I need my MP restored, man. But, regardless of that, I will go ahead and just meet you guys back whenever I get to the point where I'm at. So... Yeah. Hey game, do you want to know what what what, 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 what makes me really happy? Not making your first random encounter like two blue dragons. Yeah. Apparently, blue dragons are now random encounters. That's cool. That's cool's night, but I'm not coming inside because I can talk. Because I like to talk about my long way back there. Yeah, it's gonna be a really it's gonna be really a pain in the butt just coming back here. And, you know, just getting back to where I was, because there's no, like, warp system where you can, like, warp to any, like, beginning of the floor you want. No, you have to walk all the way back. But let me tell you, it's not going to be as bad as if I ever play the Japanese version of Majora's Mask, where, like, it's BS how they handled a uh, stone tower with the whole, you know, thing where they don't have an owl statue to warp in, so, yeah, that's not... That's not particularly a good thing. But I did drop a few thousand gil on my random encounters that I did get. So, yeah, that is that is highly unfortunate. But the good news is that Edge did gain a level from, I think, my off-screen. Or was that battle not off-screen? If I did that, my brain's going to have a massive fart moment right there. <laughs> Oh, boy. But anyway, yeah, we get a white robe for Rosa. Not like it matters, though, because she's in the back row, like always. And stuff. And I think there's, like, a thing over here. Yeah, there is a thing. And I said no to the guy who's cast Doom. And by the way, pay attention to that area to the left. Just pay attention to that. Monsters! 
But uh, yeah, this 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 is a thing that is happening. A combination of um a zombie sword and uh, let me actually see if Cure does work on the thing because the dude does have zombie in the name, so obviously he would be weak to Cure. Okay, maybe not. He's just worked to magic. Period. That's all fine in the neighborhood. It's all beautiful in the place where I'm at the neighborhood. But yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm pretty much gonna find Osmos to be rather useless, <laughs> because not even the enemies can like do all that great damage to me with Osmos and cure that much MP in return. So really, Bahamut is the big the big hero here. And with that, we get a crystal helmet for Cecil. So the crystal helmet completes the crystal set, but it does not... It does not technically make it that he's all pimped out, ultimately pimped out. No. There is another thing that Cecil must get in order to be truly the ultimate uh, badass that he is in terms of equipment. And I'm gonna get rid of my stuff, because I don't need Maiden's Kiss anymore. Yeah, I don't need Maiden's Kiss. What the heck am I doing, like, keeping that around? It, it, it's, it's not that worth it anymore. Yeah. But wait, but wait, 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 did I, did I, like, completely forget to take out the Forge? Because the Forged is like, oh, okay, there we go, there we go. There we to go. I was kind of thinking, like, something was wrong with Edge's attack, but then, like, the Forge was in there, and I was like, what? So, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna fight this. I'm gonna fight this guy. Since I might as well show him off as a random encounter, I might as well go into more detail about him, if I didn't already do so in the last part. Um, so basically the blue dragon is all like, it's all like, hey, I'm gonna cast Snowstorm on you, but, you know, the blue dragon has all this HP, and he has an incredibly weak ability, Snowstorm. That only does, like, triple digit, damn it, not quadruple digit. Which is really strange. His physical attacks aren't really that great, to be honest. Unless it's, like, the front row or something. So I might as well just go ahead and just keep on doing the thing that I do. Where I kill the thing with the dragons and a small burp that's happening. Yeah, look at that. He only does, like, one damage to me. How does that make sense? How does all this make sense? But, uh, there we go. There we go. That's, like, a huge gill return on that, so... Yeah, be sure to fight everything for money. Just remember to do it. For the money! Oh. Oh. I think I remember something about this room. I think I remember something about this room. Because there is a certain room in this dungeon that contains something incredibly rare. I think only in this room can you find it. But even then, I think the enemies are, like, extremely common, and yet the, uh... Oh, great! The one time I want random encounters to happen, and it doesn't! It's brilliant. It's a brilliant design game. I really do appreciate it. Okay, there we go. Uh, no, it's not. Okay, um, so, basically what I'm trying to do in this, well, this room at least, I don't know if it's this room or another room, but basically, there's a room in this, uh, dungeon, wow, uh, there's a room in this dungeon that I think contains those, uh, marshmallow thingies, and I think they're pink, pink puffs, I think they're called, and I think they're, like, all that's there in the room. And, and if you do defeat one of them, there's an extremely rare chance that they do drop, that they do drop a rat tail. And you can keep on trading it for adamant, that way, that way you can continue to give the guy, the blacksmith guy, like a whole bunch of them, so he can make Excaliburs for everyone. <laughs> well, you could technically do that for Kane. Because Lord knows, he is very good with a sword. I never actually tried a... I never actually tried Kane with a sword before. But knowing my luck, I probably won't, because Kane is just good with spears, that's all. That's all he's good at. 
just with the whole spear aspect thing. Okay, so let's go. Alright, so I don't think there's anything... Nope, there's nothing over there. Just a dead end. Yeah, that is if my research tells me correct. But, uh, over here, we have a random encounter that I don't want, so I might as well just run. We have over here, more Artemis arrows, so I think I'm gonna equip those back onto, uh, the uh, thing. <laughs> yeah, do you hear me? I called Rosa a thing, it's funny. And I think over here is another chest I can t Oh, Hellwind Shuriken, okay. Might as well just go ahead and get that out of the way. And I might as well get this out of the way, because this is pretty much the last thing I'm going to be doing, just killing these guys. And I might as well just talk over it, because... Heh. Because, heh. That's why. Because, screw you, I can do whatever I want in my LP. I don't care if I'm inconsistent with keeping up with cutting and cutting out things. Which I think I'm going to have to do, like, later on today. <laughs> Yep, cutting is a thing that is happening in Final Fantasy LPs. Just so we can make the LP go on a bit faster. Because I realize at this point, me not cutting out anything, that's just lazy. So, I might as well just cut out random encounters. All except for the ones that I do decide to talk over, like, suddenly and sporadically. But anyway, yeah. So, with that being said... I shall go ahead and stop this episode here. So, next time on Let's Play Final Fantasy IV, we're going to continue doing the same thing that we did in this episode. Just keep on going further and further down the line in this dungeon. So, I shall see you guys on the next time. Thank you for watching and goodbye.